Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Osa Ros, who have been certified as Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner back in May, 27th of May, 2024. And today we are recording this on Virgo New Moon, 2nd of September, 2024. The energies feel wonderful and clear and focused and joyful. So it's such a pleasure to be here with you, Osa. I really look forward to learning about you your journey. Just before I give you a space speak, I would like to just highlight the information that you share beautifully on your website and on our Galactic Astrology Practitioners listing page, talking about your journey first as a psychiatric nurse, experiencing all kinds of experiences and being in that position as a conscious psychic. You've been really connected to your intuition and to the insights from the other realms from very early on. So I'm just so fascinated by the idea of such experience and can't wait to hear more about you. So welcome. How are you today? Where would you like to start with your journey? As you say, it started from early age. I'm from a family with a connection to the nature and nature spirits. So when we were gathering in certain occasions when I was little, it was talk talks about the elderly people in the woods that have spiritual connections and uh, a knowing that we was beyond what we could about healing and to talk to these spirits. I have carried with me for all my life. I found astrology when I was uh, 17. In a library, I found two books that, uh, well, they, they talked about the sun signs and I'm a Sagittarius and I couldn't believe how much they could know about me just by my sun sign. And I was hooked. I continued with the tarot card and karma astrology. What's that? Oh, read, 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 read. So I had been very curious about astrology for a long, long, long time. And I think that is parallel to my spiritual evolution as well. But um, I had a severe breakdown when I turned 40, uh, actually almost to the day. I have my second birth uh, by that. I lost everything that was me as I, I thought of it. So I have been started from the beginning and uh, oh before that I became a, a nurse in psychiatry and sometimes I think I shouldn't have but of, of course I should <laughs> I mean we we do what we need to do and and that is right at the time at least well from, from this burnout I wasn't able to read for many years so I started to my, my curiosity was there but I started to take in information with my body to processing or, or whatever I did and um, at the uh, Venus return and solar eclipse on my ascendant I had another step up uh, and that was in astrology. I found traditional astrology and just fell in love again and started to relearn and uh, re remember what I've known from before. But even before that I had done astrology uh, meditations in that meaning that, for example, uh, when Saturn ingressed to my sign, Sagittarius, I did a meditation uh, to see or feel what Saturn will teach me during this um, transit. And uh, uh, Lilith, I have been working with her very much in meditations to understand that energy. So my crisis has been my university in a, in a sense. When I found you, I have just been to to Egypt and I went to Egypt after a vision that I was amongst um, the three wise men you know doing the the caravan with with the camels and and such very nice journey but in reality oh no it was not so nice but the visit to Egypt was phenomenal we had two hours in the in the great pyramid inside the king's chamber and that opened up and that very day Mars conjunct um, uh, Orion Nebula. I had no clue. I know where Mars was, but I don't didn't know about uh, Nebula. So that started up, I think. And then I saw you, of course, with uh, 
Pam uh, Gregory in the interview there. And oh no, or should I? And uh, yeah, I couldn't resist. So, and the more I learn, the more excited I become because this is a wonderful tool to use to find good qualities, power, wisdom, whatnot. Thank you for sharing the journey. I'm curious about the kind of breakdown of what was known and rebirth into new around the age of 40. Have you looked back at the transits of that time? Was it the Neptune square Neptune that was the most significant there? Or was there any other placements that you know? I haven't considered a Neptune as much as Pluto. Mm. because uh, Pluto was in Sagittarius, but it, it was on nine degrees, and nine degrees is, is between Mars and my sun and Paris. not Pluto, yeah. And I think that was tip over the edge. And that very day, 1st of December, uh, the moon uh, conjunct my natal Pluto. To me, it was Pluto. I am much respect for Pluto. <laughs> so yours is in Virgo, in Virgo, and you feel really good, and look, yeah. here we are with the yes. opening, bringing your story to the world. Um, I omitted to mention, I apologize at the beginning, that you are based in Sweden, right? So as, yes. you, as you talked about the stories of your people, about the odd ones out who live in nature, in woods, and who have the connection to the spirit and to the other side. So we were talking about Sweden and Swedish. Yes. Kind of folk. Regards to galactic astrology, when you connected with it after an amazing activation in the Great Pyramid, um, I remember from your certification uh, document submission that you've mentioned your struggle at the beginning as you were going through the course and a lot of doubt and not sure if this is for you or isn't for you. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and how what caused you to then break through that obstacle in a challenge and uh, tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah, absolutely. I have been channeling star beings or as I call them, the avatars of my soul. I have oracle deck of 44 pictures. So in my mind, I am a sky, I am a star being, a star seed. But when I started to read the books that you suggest, I, I couldn't read. I fell asleep. I needed an app. It was impossible to go through with it. And uh, strange. But I needed to start to think, what did I expect? And what do I want with uh, doing this service? What is my mission? in doing astrology? Well, I couldn't find an answer. But suddenly I, I just thought, no, I have to do it. I need to take in clients and um, see what, what happens. And when I did what I needed to do. I'm so happy that so bringing this story to the awareness of hopefully those that need to hear it. First of all, I want to highlight, I believe when we experience what you're talking about, when <clears throat> we are exposed to um, somebody's writing or somebody's information and our body is just going to sleep, I believe that information is not for us. I believe that person's world and if we were to consciously absorb it, somehow it would unnecessarily pollute the journey that we are to embark on and our channeling of worlds and realities through the expression of our own soul. So even though I may recommend certain books or texts in the course and even my own texts, I'm curious, were you falling asleep with my own writings as well? Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm glad. But just uh, for any recommended material, it's just recommended. Uh, it's not um, a must. So I want to highlight to anyone, if you ever experience that, just listen to your wise, wise body and soul guiding you and just let go and allow the information to come through you. And another uh, special thing with you, you already years before had the experience where your body just made you shut off the external learning and instead for you to develop the learning through your own being. The universe speaks to you from very young age. So it was important for you to not be distracted by other versions of stories, but allow the purity of your soul show you yeah. the way for you and, and those that are guided to you. So I'm so glad that you persevered and that you were so clearly and strongly guided to just start doing the work and 
surprise yourself in with every reading as information beautifully came true right you you've mentioned it with your certification document you showed me reports but early on as you started and then kind of middle journey mm -hmm. and then the latest clients and it was beautiful to see the evolution of your consciousness and your style of delivering the readings um, which is very beautiful. I wondered if you have academic background because the layout of the information that you um, submitted to me felt uh, very well presented and highly intelligent and just, I was impressed. So oh, what, did, what did you study before? Well, I am a nurse. That's my background from academic. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, I like structure. Yeah. I, I want to read from A to B to C to D. So that is my style of, of presenting my material to the client as well. I am as much a teacher as a, a healer and an astrologer, I, I believe. Perhaps the Pluto in Virgo and your son, Jupiter and Mars in Sagittarius, all on the great attractor. So uh, yeah. Yeah, you can feel it. It feels like an echo of, of previous incarnations where it's just naturally yeah. there with you. Yeah, and Saturn and Capricorn as, as well. Mm -hmm. I think this first crisis was very important because, as you said, I had to shut um, the outer world off to find my own voice. And that was what I was doing as well during this crisis. No, I can't do that. Oh, this one. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, I mean, it, it was a little bit uh, of finding my way into galactic astrology really good and i yeah. will say that you also did not learn through the style of delivery that i did early on some of the sessions that are no longer uh, publicly available just for the students of the course even that you are guided to just find your own style and your style is amazing like even the feedback from your clients how deeply the information touched them and resonated with them i'm just so glad that you allowed for the purity of your own unique style of delivery yeah. how do you feel now you've been certified in may you had a whole summer and people are beautifully guided to you for for session what um excites you most or can you tell us a little bit about the experience that your clients may have when they ask for galactic astrology soul reading well i started in my own network and my own network is the spiritual one so they had offered me a, a series of, of wonderful um, uh, charts to read. Uh, my, my spiritual teacher, I actually could could do hers, and, and she said, "But if you to, uh, had done my my garage guys chart, do you think you have find this material as, as well?" Well, I don't know because I, I haven't reached that people yet. <laughs> Many people are aware, but they don't don't have the words of the, their own power. So. So when I talk about uh, big things, that uh, they are very touched, happy, proud, and I hope filled with with new uh, power and, and uh, um, keen to get on with whatever they are, they are doing. And that was uh, actually what I found out with when I asked myself, "What what do I want? I want to inspire, uh, help people to find their own power." Not not necessarily, oh, I'm from Andromeda, I live there. But what do the connection do to you? How can you use it in your work or in your day, daily life? That is more my, my way to go. I love that. And you offer like a follow-up session where you mm -hmm. can invite your clients to connect with a star system or their star soul family through meditation, right? That's uniquely yes. guided for them in that moment with whatever specific intention. Can you share a little bit about those experience, how that has been? There has been tears mm. in joy, in surprise, in awe. Uh, oh, and I'm having chills when I, when I tell this and I've become very touched uh, also. But also I knew, but I, I haven't had the words before. And uh, so it has been about boosting the leadership. It has been find uh, angelic contacts. It has been uh, oh, so many wonderful openings, I love even that. though that it has been uh, conscious people. 
Uh, what, what do you mean by that? Maybe they have had angelic contact for years and years, but seeing them around and perhaps just like them as uh, figures uh, and such. And then suddenly they have three or four of them, the big ones, the royal stars, uh, and that makes something else with with the people. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is that even uh, people who are kind of used to feeling their connection to either angelics or star beings but then when they are taken deeper through meditation through um, intentional and sacred space it experience on so many levels as it happens when we go into altered states of consciousness in deep meditation or regression hypnosis you feel it on so many levels the love and deep connection that uh, you have like physical body reactions and i yes. think that's always amazing to witness and amazing to experience such a gift such a blessing it can really change our life there is just yeah there's just greater certainty of realness of exactly. the other side. Yeah. And of the connection. Yeah. Beautiful. The knowing is deeper. Yeah. I'm so glad you offered this and I'm uh, happy to see more and more of our quantum soul guidance practitioners uh, focusing or being guided to towards the importance of allowing their clients to experientially themselves connect with their star connections beautiful yeah. to see and it's something just kind of naturally evolved i believe from our collective desire to have our own experiences rather than uh, being reliant on psychics or priests or whatnot yes. excellent i'm curious about your natal chart and any of the stars that you've seen it when you first time uh, laid your eyes upon your galactic connections was there anything that stood out for you or are there any particular star systems that um, you feel you are more impacted by or is it really hard to pick one that stands out it's like a mother that has many children and it's you know she loves them all and especially with the paintings as you've said you've channeled so many different types of beings tell us a little bit about your own connections well the big reason why why i chose to go this course was great attraction and i read this uh, philip sedwick uh, site and i read and i read and i couldn't understand it i mean i am have no problem with the english but uh, no, I didn't get it. I have to say, if I may just uh, chip in, Philip has a very unique style of delivery and yes. of translating what he feels. He has a very unique sense of humor and a very unique delivery. And it, it can be challenging for some, but it's mm -hmm. like a genius uh, mind. So I, I've seen the interview uh, with him uh, as well. And I, I liked him, but I didn't understand still. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, the great attractor is my main thing. And as I do, I have been meditating on this uh, point for quite some time now. And from the beginning, it was just black. I didn't see anything. I didn't feel that much. Uh, but all of a sudden, I, I could feel and see a movement, like sitting in a tube torus and um, information and energy coming in and there was some kind of uh, working with energies and then give them out so this w became clearer and clearer inside of me and now i can feel when i'm out in nature that i am the great attractor in in the woods so I'm taking in, uh, not necessarily to a tree or a rock, but everything and have this integration. What's the word I'm searching? Uh, processing. And then I have perhaps vision, visions, but uh, insights coming. And that's who I am. Yeah, we finally. <laughs> I love that. And how fascinating that you were born at uh, during Jupiter's sun conjunction on the great attractor. Yeah. You know, how what a amazing what an amazing manifestation of that frequency through your yeah. expression and calling it in it's nice but it took some time so uh, super galactic center I, i'm also familiar with and i love it uh, there was the first um, experience with with energy For, first I, I just felt a welcoming um, sense and and it was very nice to be there and all of a sudden I looked up and was hit by what I called uh, God's force mm -hmm. and I'm not into God God uh, but I couldn't say anything else 
it was just a beam of light that came into me and through me. And in terms of the physical body processing it, would you say, did it take several minutes to get through it? Like, was there, you know, deeper breathing and just kind of being, I, I just recall my own experience and the body, bodies really struggle with such high frequency coming in. It takes a yeah. while to process it. No, I, I can't remember any problem with that. It was just bright lights and, and couldn't move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, it was friendly it oh, was good. all right so that's a, a super galactic center is conjunct your uh, lunar nodes and your part of fortune so uh, indeed such a blessing and your moon so it's very very important connection and I'm, I'm so happy that you have the awareness of these great cosmic forces how powerfully they they act through you and seeing this now I am not surprised at all and I'm quite relieved that you were guided not to engage with other people's content but allow whatever wants to come through you because it's so powerful and so pure and so mighty you know excellent and here we have also Shapley attractor on your venus same there it's just bla a black hole to me i, I can't experience anything uh, when i work with other people i can feel the energy but i i can't it is just a kind of energy yeah it I doesn't put tell a finger us. on it yeah no I'm no. curious the fact that it is in your sixth house, house of uh, daily service, service to others, kind of daily interactions. Um, do you feel quite drawn to like being in service? I have, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why I uh, burned myself out was uh, codependency mm -hmm. and working too hard and have no limits at all. I think that's that, that may be the reason because there is so much that can come through you, even unconsciously, especially. I feel Shapley often works on an unconscious level through people, uh -huh. energetically what is happening. So you being guided to psychiatric uh, care, being a nurse there in places where um, people's consciousness is really so uh, fragmented on so many levels, then having... Yeah. An angel like you coming through look neptune being <laughs> yeah. quite close there too so a lot of just um working on an unconscious level i would say th there was a lot of that happening for years with the open wounds i did a lot of psychotherapy during the years it wasn't enough it was uh after i started my spiritual journey that i could heal that i think then the beta centauri connection on your mercury which rules your chart as your ascendant is in gemini that um, experience or witnessing of the wounds of unconditional love not being returned or everything that that connects with that the conditionality of love on earth um, and for you to kind of mentally experiencing it through watching the mental state of people who, who are deeply wounded. Um, yeah. So again, quite fascinating how that manifested in your life and your yeah. work environment. And um, I know many people when they see Thuban, Draco stars in their chart for the first time and before they hear me talking about the bright side of that connection, what was your experience like with uh, Well. Uh, in my crisis, uh, I um, had a decision made that I refused to go for the lower frequencies. So I started to listen a little bit to Diana Cooper or people that work with dragon energy in a, in a good way and a, in a loving and powerful way. So I just skipped it. That's not me. <laughs> uh, so you're talking about the reptilian connection that people associate with the Draco, but uh, what we uh, collectively are connecting a lot uh, in our community with them, it, it's the ancient dragon energy. And I've said it many times, the, the frequency of sovereignty, uh, universal balance and deep love for uh, the organic templates of creation. Um, so happy yeah. that you felt adamant about that and uh, yes. let your soul guide you, guide you this way. Excellent. But also, if I might add, uh, I have Lilith on my ascendant and uh, that is also an energy I have been working with a lot because the, the um, most common theme about her is horrendous. I, I was devastated when I first read about her, but to take her in and learn to know her inside of me made a big difference. She's the mystic. She's the, both the light and the dark, and she she's, has connections everywhere. Yeah. 
<laughs> she thank, has. Thank you. thank you for bringing that in. And yours in particular is conjunct algal. So really yes. the story of the Medusa and very similar um, in, in the feeling to the story of Lilith, um, how yes. too she was expelled and demonized and all that. But there's such wisdom there. Uh, algal is also by the Hebrew named uh, the star of Lilith. Mm. So it's not only the head of Medusa, but also the star of Lilith. So that yeah. makes so much sense. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Well, let us look at your beautiful website first and then your gorgeous I, I want to say channeled jewelry. We'll we'll talk about that too. They are. <laughs> so, yes. um, can you please um, call out the the pronunciation of your website name? Soul Key Gem. So say it again. Soul Key Gem. Soul Key Gem. Perfect. I uh, my brain didn't see the English that it's actually. <laughs> my brain went. Oh, this is Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, it's not. Website. That's a beautiful website. And so call solkygem.weebly.com. And there is an English section of your website yes. and then um, a lot of Swedish too. Percentage wise, how, how much Swedish uh, community do you serve and versus English at the moment? Would majority be Swedish or, or English? Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. But, but let me say 85% Swedish people. Uh, so everything that is written in English uh, is what I have on the other four. Very it good. is about uh, astrology and um, my jewelry as well. I want to highlight this beautiful sentence. You put it in words so perfectly. So you, you're talking about what astrology means to me. And uh, the thought here that I want to highlight is that your overarching thought is that we are all bo born from the cosmos and share consciousness with everything. The day we are born, we carry with us a wonderful mix of the consciousness that the asteroids, planets, stars and cosmic points visible at that moment have. So really, we are expression of, of cosmic celestial bodies playing through us, co-creating through us as us. And I've always yes. uh, felt that quite strongly. So thank you for mm -hmm. the clarity of that thought. Okay, yeah. so people can book a character horoscope. Yeah, because and by that I mean just without the star connections. Mm -hmm. I see. The more the traditional astrology and then expanding to cosmos, looking at the yes. celestial bodies far out of our star system, and uh, then the beautiful meditation journey. What I share here are current services, current prices. If people are watching the, this further in the future, these may change, evolve. Uh, so let's look at the beautiful jewelry you have a instagram account for quite a while also soul key gem you can find yes. uh, osa there uh, i'll just scroll through these and can you tell us how this journey started for you and where did you learn the eloquent delicate work with silver i work with addictive people before and uh, they couldn't always express their feelings they talked about a lump in the stomach and someone sitting in uh, on their own shoulder or something so i asked them can you paint them for me and then we have a dialogue so this is my first expression uh, because i did it myself as well of course uh, but um, then i uh, broke down i couldn't read I couldn't read for 15 years. Wow. But I could paint. I used color to express my agony. I did a course in something called Vedic, Vedic art, and that is intuitive painting. Uh, so you use a lot of, I use a lot of colors and I wipe, wipe things off and Oh, there is something and then I, I continue the, the painting so I, I cannot say I want to, to ride a horse nothing comes out of me sometimes has coming out of the picture uh, by doing this technique so I started uh, when I moved here uh, in a club for artists and in this club uh, there was uh, women doing silver uh, smithing and uh, I had crystals because I have always loved crystals. So I asked someone, can you make something for me? Make something for me with this. Oh, no, but go there. But she can teach you to do it yourself. So 
Well, and of course, she has a spot, had a spot for me. So I started mm -hmm. and then I did a course in something called Soul Body Fusion, connecting to the soul and, and uh, intentionally work your, your way. And on this course, people saw what I had on my neck. And, oh, I want something like that. And so I started to do something like that. And this is my work. It is absolutely stunning and it feels divine and I can understand the super cosmic points working through you. Like that's what it looks like. It's very unique, extraordinary and special and charged with high frequency. And yeah. oh, what a pleasure to see the manifestation of your unique uh, galactic astrology chart in your life. Yeah. Singing this beautiful yeah. odd and how it may really create beautiful ripple effect in this world. I am so, yes. so grateful that um, I have the pleasure of um, welcoming you to uh, Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner's Path and may you continue to thrive and attract the most wonderful, expansive, soul-touching experiences with your clients. Osa, is there anything else that you would like to bring to your podcast any other message or story that may have inspired you throughout your way? Yes, my hope, my inspiration is to use the information I and all of us have to work with, to have as a, a map, how can I use the connection to these points or, or stars or uh, whatever it is, and go back and, and reread, uh, re-listen, and use it, use it both in a very severe way, intentional way, but also play with it. I have been playing as well with my meditation and, and uh, whatnot to just see where it ends, to listen to my own thoughts wh while doing the meditation. That's One it. more question that stems from it for me is your ways of grounding, because these are really expansive energetics and frequencies that are very actively alive in your being. How do you notice when you are becoming out of balance? What are the signs for you? And what is the ne what are the next steps then for you to ground and recenter? Can you share that? Uh, well, this soul body fusion is grounding, very much so. I also hope that I bring down the cosmos within me and us. I'm not only up there. But uh, of course, I need to take walks outside and, and do some yoga, not, not after a session, but to be in my body very much. Would you agree that um, people who may find these super cosmic points, a lot of star energies in their chart, that somehow it is important for us to have a regular time in seclusion where we can just be. Otherwise, it's quite overstimulating to be constantly reading other people's energies, whether consciously or unconsciously. Very much so, yes, absolutely. I think we all should do that, or in general, and get rid of that phone. Mm, <laughs> yes. Do you know what? I cancelled... Everything that's scrollable on my phone, it's out. I deleted all those apps. I can only see them on my computer when I'm in my work. And when I finish all my tasks, I then quickly double check. Is there anything I need to respond to? But what's scrollable, it's out because I couldn't help myself. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> feels so no. much better. Well, this has been such a pleasure. I'm so glad I got to know you a little more and really connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. And I hope that our audience will feel your beautiful energetics and feel drawn to allow the frequency, the consciousness that works through you to assist them on their journey to find clarity and expansion and empowerment. I feel so excited for the path ahead for you and for those that will be guided to you. So thank you, thank you for being you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for My kind pleasure. words. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you all for watching and we look forward to seeing you again in the next podcast. Take care.